Thanks to our sister show, God Awful Movies, the recommendations on my streaming services are fucked. Amazon, Netflix, and Hulu all seem to think, with good cause, that I want to spend the rest of the year watching persecution fetish pieces about the war on Christmas. But in fairness, <laughs> we haven't quite fucked my YouTube recommendations yet, which we're rectifying a bit this week with another God Awful Mini. So tell us, Heath, what will we be breaking down today? We watched Why God is a He by Dennis Prager from Prager University. It's the story of Dennis Prager. <laughs> and his perfectly rational obsession with God's penis. And Eli, how bad was this mini? Well, if you've been kicked out of Wendy's once again for screaming, God has a cock, damn it, a cock. <laughs> And the only university you could get into was YouTube. You will love this video. I know this is a Wendy's. I come here a long time. Yeah. I do this a lot. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. So we're going to start off stating the question, obviously. Why is God referred to as a he in the Bible? <laughs> so Dennis Prager wants a non-binary God who goes by they, them. I, my curiosity was piqued at this moment with the start. <laughs> Right. Well, it's it's not so much that he wants it. It's that God's maleness is, in his words, quote, one of the criticisms many people make against the Bible, end quote. What? Is that one of the criticisms people make of the Bible? <laughs> As professional Bible criticizers, I feel like my work is being yeah, attacked exactly. a little bit. Right? Yeah, I was like, well, that, when did we get around to that? There was so much more material. But, of course, Dennis has the answer. It's because Contrary to every appearance, apparently, the Bible is, and I quote, preoccupied with making a kinder, less violent, more just world, end quote. Okay, my curiosity is no longer peaked. Yeah, <laughs> didn't last long. He sees men as kind, nonviolent, and just. No, Heath, he has a point. You see, the back of the original Bible said, not, so it really is. <laughs> <laughs> Psych. Bible end. <laughs> well, and then he risks a lot of his audience by insisting that God isn't actually male or female, which is, I mean, technically sure. that's true. Yeah. <laughs> God is not. But not because, as Dennis asserts, God transcends gender. <laughs> God doesn't verb anything. Yeah. Nope. nope. <laughs> <laughs> but Prager explains that the Bible writers had three choices on how to depict God's gender. He says they could choose, quote, masculine, he, Feminine, she, or neuter, it. I'm sorry. Did they, Dennis? The authors of the yeah. Bible only had three choices. <laughs> they they only, did. They only. <laughs> they did. Mm -hmm. But then, quick before the transphobics click away, he rules out gender neutral pronouns because, uh, well, but because first of all, gross. But but secondly, he claims that there are no gender neutral terms in Hebrew. Okay. Pretty sure non-gendered nouns do exist in Hebrew. God, for example, you just said moments ago <laughs> that God transcends gender. They have a word for God, right? He also says that the word it doesn't exist in Hebrew, and it definitely does. Well, so, okay, I, I, admitting I know virtually nothing about this beyond a quick Google, I believe Hebrew is one of the languages where every noun has a gender, and there's like even a male and a female version of of they, but I think gender non-binary people who, who speak Hebrew just switch out their pronouns as they see fit. But it's important to keep in mind that, like, we're not reading it in Hebrew. Right. Right. So, like, <laughs> right or wrong, this is still fucking meaningless. Very meaningless. He also explains that we have to be able to relate to God and who the fuck can relate to non-gender binary entities. Am I right? Totally. Right. I get it. <sighs> yeah. But as if that's not reason enough, and clearly it isn't. He has an additional three-part reason. Three? Oh, I was hoping he would have three more parts. Good. <laughs> yes, no, so because he needs some shit to fly around, some words to fly around the screen at him. First is the fact that the Bible's primary concern is making a good world. Well, the second time around. The cause... second world, yeah. <laughs> and w what an incredible admission of failure it is, by the way, to say that that was the goal, right? Like <laughs> The fact that the New Testament even exists kind of makes that a... A uh, useless fuck up out of their God, doesn't it? So, would you say he's crushing it right now? Yeah. God? <laughs> he's nailing it. Anyway, he carries that thought on by pointing out that, quote, two, a good world can only be achieved by making good people. 
again, version 2.0 of people. He killed all yeah. of version one. Also, like, I feel like <laughs> the omnipotent guy has way more options than Dennis is letting on. But here's the conclusion. And get ready for an amazing conclusion. Quote, three, the people who commit nearly all the world's violence are males. End quote. Okay, one correct answer from Dennis Prager. Look at that broken clock, everybody. We did it. Yeah, but the key is the real reason that the Bible made God a man is because it, the Bible is so feminist. He points out that, quote, it is in both men and women's interest to depict God in the masculine, <laughs> end quote. Yeah, I'm sure the women of the world, they really appreciate finally being told what's in their best interest. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome, the women. I'm Dennis Prager. <laughs> I'm Dennis Prager. <laughs> well, okay, but his point, it's not that men need to know God is capable of violence. I know that's what it sounds like, but he's going a different way. His point is that young boys aren't going to listen to some vagina-wielding lady god about rules. And as we all know, Hitler, Stalin, Pol Pot, uh, they had two atheist moms. All right. of them all had of two them, atheist them. moms. They are also atheists. Yep. It's also why single atheist moms only raise murder rapists. Typical. <laughs> yeah. Well, and then he goes full, did you know that Frederick Douglass was actually a Republican on us? And points out that even Barack Hussein Obama agrees with him. <laughs> Not really, but here's what he says. In 2008, Obama made a speech where he pointed out that fathers matter. So, same thing, basically. Okay, are we playing with Barack Obama is correct about stuff? Dennis Prager, <laughs> you, you sure you want to go with that? Did Barack Obama say anything about anything else ever, politics-wise? Cut. Yeah, right. <laughs> and cut. Right. Well, and to be clear, the Obama quote that he pulls out in support of his point is just a statistic about how kids with a stable father figure are less likely to wind up in jail as though there was nothing else significant that separated single parent households from two income. I mean, two parent households. <laughs> no, I get it. Okay. What we need to do is rub the money on the single moms and their kids do better in school. Yeah. I understand this correlation. Trust yeah, me. It exactly. actually is. you got to rub it. Ancient Hebrew didn't have plurals. Yes, it did. <laughs> <All right. laughs> well, now to be clear, he's not comparing the statistics of like, just moms versus just dads, which is the only way this could even theoretically be meaningful in the why depict God as male discussion. It's single moms versus two parent households. But despite the disingenuousness of those stats, he summarizes them as young men cannot possibly absorb complex moral dictates like don't murder and don't steal unless they hear a man say it. Okay, just to review, the male God came up with a world that has some child abuse, murder, and rape. That mm -hmm. The Goldilocks zone was non-zero for that stuff, omnipotent God. Yeah. Yep. Also, his list of 10 rules did not include the not raping, which I'm just going to say, a lady God probably would have prioritized over having no other gods before me twice on the same <laughs> list. Twice. Or, or three times, depending on how you read it, yeah. Well, and, and then he undercuts his own fucking point by claiming that a masculine God in the Bible can substitute for a father in real life, which means that those Obama stats either disprove his point <laughs> or come exclusively from non-Christian house, non-Abrahamic households. He's comparing apple and oranges. He doesn't understand that that's what he's doing. <laughs> right, right. But quick before any of that can occur to you, he turns this point into what I think is a veiled threat. Quote, any discomfort you might feel with a masculine depiction of God is not comparable to the pain we feel if boys are not civilized into good men. If God was just some fucking lady, we'd all be like, fuck her, murder! What? <laughs> yep. Really? I have never wished that God existed, but just for Dennis Prager's sake, I will take one lady God. One, <laughs> right, just yeah, for just Dennis Prager. Once. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, the point that he's making, apparently on purpose, is that it's way more important to raise boys well than girls because boys are more important. There's also this weird bit where he points out that the whole thing where God is, like, nice wouldn't work if he was a lady because, obviously, ladies are compassionate. But if a man sees a man God do it or hears about one doing it forthhand from a historical record full of known verifiable lies, he'll emulate it. You see. Oh, uh, see, I've always wondered why I grew up wanting to kill all the Ammonites, and now yeah. I know it's <laughs> from the. Well, okay, so lest you think that we're exaggerating, listen to the like prerequisite sexism in this quote. Quote 
If God were depicted as female, young men would deem traits such as compassion, mercy, and care for the downtrodden as feminine and would not identify with them. But if God, their father in heaven who is strong, on occasion even a warrior, cares for the poor and loves justice, mercy, and kindness, then these traits are also masculine and to be emulated. Okay, again, how would you say that's working out, Dennis Prager? Good? Right. Is God nailing it? Do you really think that's going well? <laughs> would you say he's known for his merciful nature? Right, yeah. Or, uh, I don't know, maybe his son murdering a nature. Lot, a lot of son <laughs> murdering. And, and by the way, if you're thinking that girls also need female role models, you're wrong, okay? <laughs> and I honestly think he's trying to imply that it's because we can pop them in the mouth if they get uppity. He says, quote, of course, girls need female role models, but not to avoid violence, end quote. Okay, well, what if we have another God who's female? Get the fuck out. This is serious. <laughs> who said that? Okay, wait. He says, of course, girls need female role models, but not to avoid violence. I want to know what Dennis Prager thinks girls need female role models for. Yeah. It's baking. Probably for some... Vaginal blood thing. I don't know. <laughs> Cooking can be fun. <laughs> yeah, right. And then he points out that girls are more likely to obey male authority figures anyway, and he justifies that by bullshitting his way through more statistics. See, in some study or another, more than half of female inmates come from a father absent home. And as long as you don't pay attention to the fact that the overwhelming majority of single parent homes are mother only, that sounds like it might back up his point if additional <laughs> statistics also existed to support it. Right, but they all came from homes in which God was male, so... <laughs> is it just, no, hmm. no, no. Nailing it? Right, right. Like, even that doesn't actually back up his point. It just comes closer. And then he skates dangerously close to an outright threat by pointing out to women that if they go and feminize God, it's going to result in men beating them up. And then it'll, it'll even be fucking feminine God's fault. <laughs> Don't fuck up religion. That would make it bad for women. What, yeah. what are you talking about? <laughs> when are you? Right. That's Every time he speaks, that's what I wonder. And then he points out that with all the absentee fathers on earth already, it'd be a real dick move to take away the heavenly father, too. Yeah, honestly, I would love a child support check from God at this point. Is he offering that? Can we right, get one yeah. of those instead? <laughs> yeah. And then he concludes by freely admitting that he's Dennis Prager, which I feel like should <laughs> be like he should be more embarrassed to talk about that in public. At least. Yeah. Same name is a punchline, and I don't even realize it. Smash that like and subscribe button. Yeah. I'm Dennis Prager. The end. <laughs> right. And of course, over on Gam, we usually wrap things up with the Breakfast Club close, a kind of randomly named conclusion where we predict what happened to the characters in the movie after the credits. Now, the only characters in this mini were, of course, Dennis Prager and Man God. So um, any breakfast club closes for them? Uh, okay. Yeah, sure. Um, Man God got canceled and started opening for Dave Chappelle. <laughs> <laughs> Dennis Prager got COVID, raised a bunch of money based on how sick he was from COVID, and then made a video saying that COVID wasn't so bad yes, for YouTube. That, that's <sighs> real, though. God, what a dick. All right. Well, lucky for us, Dennis Prager has something like infinity thousand more of these things. So <laughs> we'll never be short for content on God Awful Minis.